Good morning, everyone. We are waiting for our HOD, ma'am. Once she will join and some more students will connect with us, we will quickly start our today's session. So be patient. Ma'am, should we start now? Now, oh, yes, start. Okay, okay ma'am. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of our Department Information Technology, we welcome you all on the eighth day of three-week departmental induction program for the year of 2020 undergraduate batch of IT, Macau, West Bengal, sponsored by TechIP3. Today we have our special guest, Professor Shobhushachi Mukhopadhyay, with us on the topic Successful Career Direction for IT and Relevant Fields. We also have a yoga session after our guest talk. 
So now I am requesting one of our faculty members, Mr. Joy Shamadar, to please introduce Professor Shobhush. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, today uh, we have with uh, Professor Shobhush Ji Mukhopadhyay. Uh, he is the Kolkata lead of Facebook Developer Circle. Apart from being Kolkata lead Facebook Developer Circle, he is also a Google Developer Expert in Machine Learning and Intel Software Innovator. He is a faculty of business analytics in PG management studies at BIMS Kolkata, Macau, under this Macau. He is also the visiting faculty of analytics in PG management studies at Symbiosis Center of Information Technology, that is SCIT, Pune, which is a deemed university. Mr. Mukhopadhyay received MS in Physical Sciences from IIESR Kolkata and was the topper of 2015 batch. Mr. Mukhopadhyay received BTEC in ECE from CEM Kolaghat under Macau. He is the course curriculum developer and paper setter and examiner and moderator of Macau and SCIT Pune. He was the co-founder of co-founder and chief research officer of Twilit MedTech Private Limited and currently involved in startup mentoring activities. Meanwhile, Mukhopadhyay was a project scientist in nanoscope technologies for a brief period of time. He was featured in Facebook special coverage, The Limitless and one of India's leading innovators and entrepreneurs of 2018. He has more than 50 publications, which includes patents, books, journals, and proceedings. His findings on AI-based retinal disease detection and AI-based early-stage cancer detection has been highlighted in all leading newspapers like The Hindu, The Economic Times, The Indian Express, Business Standards, Daily Worlds, as well as on different television channels. His research success also has been featured in leading national and international tech magazines like eHealth, Analytics, India Magazine, The Better India, BioSpectrum. He received several international awards, which includes Best Research Paper Award, prestigious SPIE Photonics Education Scholarship 2014. Only nine, 19 students from Asia. Hello, I can't hear you. Hello? Am I audible? Yes, yes you are audible. You are audible. There must be some problem in their uh, audio. You are audible. Yes, sir. So, most inspiring Facebook developer circle lead alumni hour 2020 by IISA Kolkata and so on. He also received several travel grants from SPI, IISA to present research work in international conference. He is serving as a reviewer of several SCI, Spinger, and NASA journals. He is also an external expert of Institution Innovation Council, IIC, of IISA Kolkata. Mr. Mukhopadhyay delivered invited talks, served as a panelist and judge in leading IITs, IISARs, NITs, IIESTC, Shippur, and many leading state and central university of India. He also delivered invited talks in foreign university like University of Global Village, Bangladesh, University of Kofi and the Guinea, Guinea, GCIT, Bhutan, and so on. Mr. Swabhasachi the research on AI-based early stage cancer detection has been included in the current affairs syllabus of Indian top government's official competitive exam like UPSC, IES, IBPS, banking sector, etc. Mr. Mukhopadhyay was also invited to deliver talks in faculty development program of IEM Kolkata and his refresher courses for faculty in Calcutta University. He also invited as judge of NASA Space 
Apps Challenge 2018 at Heritage Institute of Technology, Kolkata. He was a judge of Hall Prize and at Netaji Shubhash Engineering College and Calcutta University. He is also judge of Smart India Hackathon 2020 by AICT and MHRT and Ministry of Higher Education. His TEDx talks also features in news channels, including ETV Telangana, Chapku TV, and uh, many newspapers. He also wrote technical articles and editorial of leading Bengali daily Anandavaja Putika. Mr. Mukhopadhyay received honorary mention in government official site of Embassy of India to Switzerland, the Holy See, and Lichesian for his research. So, from Department of IT, I welcome you, Mr. Mukhopadhyay. Now, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Joy, sir. I am thankful to Department of IT for giving me the opportunity to share a few thoughts on the career development in IT directions for the students who have been currently enrolled for the BTEC and MTech programs as well as the BSc enrolled students. So basically, today I will share the basic aspects of the career directions on IT and what are what are the careers perspective students can choose for their future directions. So let me share the screen first. So let me know once the screen becomes visible to all of you. Is the no, screen sir. visible? No, sir. So is it visible now? Yes, yes. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I believe that there are students who are from the BTEC background. So keeping their their uh, aspects in mind, the talk will be quite light. In order to guide you, what you can explore in. For you, and definitely, I believe there are, there are corresponding career directions will be given to you as well. So, let's start. What is information technology? Basically, those who have enrolled in the recent course. So, in a simple language, if it is thus, it's all about the study or use of the computers, computer or telecommunication system for storing, retrieving, and sending information. Okay. So now, if we go back to our university curricula, map out what are the courses they are currently providing. If you look at them, then there is obviously the BTEC in information technology, which is a traditional four-year course on AI approved by AICT. So basically, which has the intake of fifty-six. Then you can you can you can see that there are some specialization courses have been being provided by Macout, like BSc in IT, BSc in, uh, for example, specialization in AI directions, another specialization course on cyber security, data science, IoT, cryptography and network security, big data, blockchain and technology, and apart from the BCA course. And if you look at the MTech direction, master degree direction, so basically if you see, there is obviously one traditional MTech course on information technology, and there are a few specialization courses like geoinformatics, artificial intelligence, data science, information security, and Internet of Things. So now, those who are studying BTEC, BSc, or those who have enrolled in MTech, now the common scenario is that one thing is that is, is related to your traditional course, like traditional IT program. And another one is a specialization course, like there are courses on the cyber security, there are courses on the blockchain, uh, data science. So how will you proceed? Towards them regard, regarding your regular curriculum, how will you prepare them and how will you prepare yourself for the company job perspective? So, this is the very common scenario, common thing roams around, around your mind whenever you are enrolling in your certain programs. So, that's why the, this, there is so much relevance of this type of the indi indi induction programs, the novel initiative taken by the university, just to guide you that. What can be the career perspective for you? What can be the right directions for you? And what those actually those discipline actually implies? So, in a simple language, I will try to explore those things one by one. Those who have any kind of confusions and queries, you can ask me any question, no problem regarding that. Out of um, best of my capacity, I will try to answer it. 
So if you see that the industry standard job roles, for example, those who are pursuing the B.Tech career in traditional IT courses or MTech, pursuing MTech career in traditional IT courses or those who have enrolled in BCA program or make out, that look, there are few few traditional job setups are there, which is in the current setup of the 2020, those who are the major recruiter, for example, Tata Consultancy Service, Wipro, or, or for example, Cognitive Technology Solutions, Accenture. So basically the job roles you will come across that automation testing, Android developer, Java full stack developer, QNX developer, infotainment system testing, and front end and back end web developer. Now, if you see one by one, that what are those job roles? And what are the, uh, I mean, for example, if you see the automated automation testing, now in automation testing is basically is all about to take this test test the software techniques in, in comparisons with the actual outcome with the expected outcome okay so basically the the knowledge regarding the selenium selenium web driver or java is mainly the knowledge required to explore in this particular domain next if you see the android developer role now, Android developer role, if you see that, that basically requires your knowledge in, in Kotlin, Java, or C++ programming languages, along with your basically Android software development kit. Next, if you look, that is Java full stack developer, which is a very high demand job. I mean, after, if you, it is a very frequent job role after passing out BTEC or MTEC in IT domain. So basically, <clears throat> you require actually in two aspects of the skill one is the front-end development skill another one is the back-end development skills so in the front-end development skill you will come across html css javascript react js whereas in the back-end back development skill you will come across the python java ruby programming or node.js so these are the basically skill setups is required so full stack job de developer you can you can you can easily understand that you require the skill end-to-end um, -end software development in the both aspects for the front end aspect as well as the, for the back end development aspects now if we go to the qnx developer or infotainment system testing in both the roles actually basically development is related to the advanced driver assistance development for example the digital instrument cluster connectivity modules and sphere and infotainment system that appear in car brands including audi bmw ford and and so on so these two are the basically relevant to your basically the car and autom automated car development purpose. For example, if infotain infotain infotainment system testing, you will you will require the software environment like Denslow MX Suite IVI test software. Okay, and obviously there is another job role which is quite frequent in this in this arena. If you look at them, that is front end and back end web developer. So front end basically client side and back end implies the server side. So the essential of backend development include languages like Java, Ravi, Python, PHP, .NET, etc., .NET, etc., and the common front 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 end languages are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So you can see that these are the very common job roles in 2020 scenario. Whenever you, you go, you, you you after passing out the colleges or whenever you are being hired from the campus interviews. So basically, these are the job roles in generally you will come across after passing out the BTEC or MTEC programs in traditional IT courses. Now, there is one, one common scenario that how you practice. practice, what will be the, your online coding platforms. So you can, you can, you can explore out the codeshape.com or online gdb.com or javapoint.com. So these are the very good areas where you can actually excel, explore out your knowledge on C++ or Java Okay, this is a very, very up-to-date and state-of-art platform, online platform to explore your skills, which you often come across in the coding round because you see you all, all are aware that in the campus recruitment, you will have the, uh, yes, the coding round. And that's the reason you require to practice your coding skill setup quite a lot. So this is a very, very effective platform to explore it out. And the next, we'll see the blooming fields in IT. You might have seen during during my initiation of my talk, I mentioned that there are the few few courses have been specialized courses have been introduced in IT domain 
by the department of it which is a very very novel initiative by mac out our university is that they are long, they are giving us the, you guys the opportunity to explore out the bsc or mt courses on the specialization domains like data science there are opportunities in iot blockchain so why those things are required if you see that the field has expanded so much i mean last 30 40 years i mean whenever in in our india the culture of information technology come around the end of the 1960s and then if you see there are a lot of universities gradually started their program so basically our university on mac out was uh, established in 2001 and gradually they have they have they have now now they have under 220 engineering colleges under them and 40 management colleges affiliated to them and they apart from their in house program courses so basically the new courses are coming up due to the new need of the current market scenario if you see the new courses have been launched if you see the artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning data science cyber security and now is it cyber security and network security both belongs to information security so there is another one specialization course in mtech on the information security is there blockchain iot big data so these are the boom field gradually i mean getting the attentions apart from the traditional it courses so that's why the university is giving some opportunity for the students who want to explore them to specialized courses now we will come across that what are the skill set ups are required and what are the job roles and opportunities and what are the companies which are gradually showing their interest in this particular fields so it is always better to have a, have a good idea 360 view that what is actually currently going on and what kind of the information knowledge you can gather from the university which actually you can deliver in the industry standard because this is a high time to reduce the gap between academic and industry and that's why this type of the steps have been taken by the university rather just to give you the industry standard knowledge such that you can explore your career in a optimum way so <clears throat> if you see those those terms are very common nowadays data science data analytics and data engineering so basically what are those terms if you see if you try to understand a simple language like that data science is all about the interdisciplinary field where you will, you will give have the opportunity to explore out your knowledge on statistics computer science data mining okay so these are the these are the these are the very good i mean this is a very interdisciplinary platform where actually you can have the opportunity to deal with the structural and unstructural data set through those knowledges now what is structured and unstructured data so basically the structured data you will have the opportunity to store them in a tabular format okay so basically sql is one of those languages are being explored to deal with the rdbms kind of stuffs but for the unstructured data every day we are coming across because you see whenever the world wide web has been uh, i mean launched in 1994 and then you will we are coming across the lot of internet facilities and then we have we have seen the blossoming up of the uh, social media for example facebook you are uh, twitter and you are regular basis of you uploading your images videos they put in post there so there are a huge amount of the unstructured data around in terms of the images videos text and as well as you can see the semi structured data as well whenever you are typing email and sending email so these were these are the one of the semi semi structured activities whenever you are logging out in for example you are logging out logging in in uh, in linkedin so whenever you are logging in linkedin your login time and log out time and activity time are stored in a tabular format but whenever you are putting some post with text images or videos it is the unstructured but whereas your login time log out time that is a structured part so this is a good hybridization of structured and unstructured is a semi structured activity so basically you can see that there are the humongous amount of the structured unstructured and semi structured data is around of it so in in 2020 scenario if you look at and and then the last 5 years basically we are mostly dealing with this unstructured and semi structured part of the data so that's the reason you can you can come across that the importance of the data engineering is all about how to tackle those the databases okay because you see nowadays we are gradually moving towards the no sql approach not only sql where you will you will you will come to see the databases like the graph databases very very strong example and there is one of the whenever i will discuss about the big data part i will mention that there is a separate job demand on the graph databases the companies like neo4j has has a huge demand on the regarding on the graph database so 
So basically, the schemaless database approach are getting popularity and they have the feasibility in the current practical scenario, whereas the traditional databases have the limitations. Because nowadays we are exper experiencing three Vs that we will discuss during our big data part that velocity, variety, and your volume, and how we are tackling it. So the programming language in data science, you see that is that in, in generally data science domain R is a very, very popular programming language. So what is happened, you see um, that in 1970s, whenever we started with the, the gradually we are coming to see that procedure oriented languages. And then we are we are gradually from the 90s, we went to went on to the object orientation domain gradually from the uh, via, via Java. So basically what happened that that in basically Linux Foundation in 1991, whenever the formation of the Linux Foundation happened, so basically they highlighted the need of the open source the open source programming languages, free and open source programming language, because earlier during 70s and 80s, those programming languages are the commercial programming languages. And they, they don't have those those kind of open source facilities. It's not about the ability ab 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 making available those languages free, but open source has the facility. For example, developers, e each each and every corner around the, around the world, everybody can contribute there. With, with and that's how this coding this languages are blossoming up so fast so r is one of those languages and the this open source era the gnu free project under the linux foundation is one of the optimum contribution is basically r r is that's why r is so much popular in the in the statistics domain and those who are exploring in the data science domain and python why python because you see one of the advantage definitely python is Python and Java in both the cases is that they are the cloud communicator language. So nowadays what you do, you basically store data in cloud, you explore them, you deploy analytics there and you get the results. But you see, whenever you look at the popular framework, machine learning or deep learning popular frameworks, that the Keras, TensorFlow or PyTorch, they are highly Pythonic. So due to that, that the Python has a huge popularity and acceptability in the data science domain. So Whenever those who are exploring the specialization courses in BSc program or MTech program, or even the traditional IT courses, you you all have the opportunities that that to have a good hand if you are interested in to explore in the machine, can you build your career in data science, machine learning, or artificial intelligence domain to have a good hand in R and Python. And because you see all the uh, all the frameworks, the popular frameworks, I, as I mentioned, that Keras, TensorFlow, and PyTorch, they all are basically highly Pythonic. Whereas the Keras and TensorFlow have been highly developed by the Google. Now we, nowadays we are moving towards the lightweight devices. So basically, edge computing and fog computing. If you see for the edge computing purpose, where you can actually deploy your smartphone for the analytical purpose, so there you can use the TensorFlow Lite that is launched by Google recently a couple of years back even if you see in the in the because we are we are also heading towards the quantum computing paradigm in next 10 15 years so basically now it is a lot of research are going in this particular field so quantum machine learning is also blossoming up another field where actually google has launched another framework that is tensorflow quantum so those are very, very interesting things nowadays. If you look around, that due to the blessings of the open source free softwares, you can actually come across the lot of facilities which are being provided by those companies. For example, PyTorch. PyTorch has been majorly developed by Facebook and also Uber. The you are all aware of the name of the familiar with the name of the Uber. Uber has also contributed while the, in the development of the PyTorch along with Facebook. So basically, these are the ways. Uh, in the nowadays, the information technology are becoming the integral part of our life. Now, you actually, the, the actual potential you can understand of those technologies and tools that are available around you, once you actually can experience them and uh, can, um, can learn that how you can ex explore out in this particular field. So, <clears throat> some basic applications, for example, very simple applications, if you see, like, wh what, what uh, to detecting the black, bad plants with machine learning okay so basically what you will do you will basically you have you will have the level data what we call the supervised learning with the good plant and black plant will be leveled with that and you will build the training data set and you will deploy some algorithms okay from it may be support vector machine or any other machine learning tools to check 
with for some unknown sample that whether that particular plant, plant is bad or not or then or uh, there are some other applications like self calling robot and everything what you experience even in the in the healthcare domain for example example disease, disease diagnostics like early stage cancer diagnostic early stage diabetes retinopathy diagnostic purpose you often see the applications of the machine learning and deep learnings so what are the leading companies if you see who are basically showing the interest in this in this data driven approach so basically google microsoft oracle amazon all the ibm so all the, if you see there there are all the 500 uh, the companies which all belong to the 500 top 500 fortune companies they all basically are showing their gradual interest in this particular area now if you look at the top uh, hiring companies from data science data analytics and data engineering 2019 you can actually experience that cisco google Dell Technologies, Yahoo, Microsoft, Apple, and everyone, including Facebook, that that everyone has shown shown their their interest in the data data driven approaches, and and they are hiring a lot of data scientists, data engineers, data analysts. Okay, and obviously, if you see among them that TCS, we provide the, the, those two two companies are there as a major recruiter, who are basically uh, basically giving the opportunities for the professors and experienced persons to explore their career in data data engineering or data analytics or data science directions now if we look at the companies hiring in data science business analytics uh, or data analytics in last five years that is take mahindra pwc deploy deloitte accenture kpmg Mac, capgemini ptm so <clears throat> so these are the companies including amazon they have they have, have hired a lot of people in this particular domain because you see data is a new oil and every day if you see the expansion of the database growth is quite exponential okay so business leaders are quite puzzled how to deal with those data and they require data 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 science experts who actually can explore as per the domain basis for example business analyst earlier days it is not too much far if you look back the five years around even nowadays even also the btech engineers people from the statistics background who get this kind of roles in data analy business analysts role but you see the the role has so much potential based on the data science that even nowadays universities including macout has launched bbmb program on business analytics such that students such that students from the management background can also explore in, in this particular field so you can see science technology management in every domain that that, that particular field of it this data science has a huge acceptability because of there so much of the vast opportunities, job opportunities in the market. Now, in the if you see the top companies in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning who are actually exploring it, obviously they're Microsoft, Google, Yahoo, Amazon, IBM, Infosys, Facebook, TCS as one of the major recruiter. So those are the companies actually they are basically exploring the AI, machine learning, and deep learning. And TCS Innovation Lab is a good opportunity along with IoT as well. Whenever I will discuss during the IoT section, I will mention that along with AI, you will have a lot of opportunities of exploring the good, um, good industrial experience in, in IoT domain as well. So now big data. So basically, what is the difference between between the uh, the artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning? Before I am going to big data, is basically that look that in artificial intelligence. In, uh, if you if we if we talk around, it's not only about the classification problems, but as well as it deals with the automation related stuffs as well. So basically, one of the major contribution of the artificial intelligence recent area, if you see, that is the that is the robotic process automation, which will be evolved as intelligence process automation in 2025. Because during if you see in 2014, it was business process automation. In the last five years, it has evolved as a robotic process automation. So when TCS went for the hiring uh, of the of the people from the robotic process automation background. So basically, they come to see that they require three lakh people in 2018, but they come to see only 250 people in India. The, the those who know the robotic process automation. So you can see you can understand the job gaps, expertization gap. That the company requires three lakh experts, where only 250 people in India know the robotic process automation. So that's why there is the automation anywhere at the companies like automation anywhere is giving so much training on the robotic process automation. And obviously there is another part that is the classification part where you deploy the uh, machine intelligence, the machines are learning 
learning by auto, learning by themselves and solving the complicated real world problems so we generally come across the machine learning and then what happens whenever you have the data in order of 10 to the power 5 so basically go by the deep learning so basically whenever you study in this field in your curriculum you will come to see there are concepts like activation functions so whenever you go by the machine learning you will have the sigmoid function or tan hyperbolic function which is not performance wise scalable if you see the mathematical curve of the tan hyperbolic or the sigmoid function so they saturate somewhere they are not the performance wise scalable so basically whenever you have data in order of 10 to the power 5 so you can see that particular saturation so that's why to have the scalability continuous scalability we go to deep learning where will we come across relu as an activation function which is the continuous scalability you can observe so those are the mathematical background but these are the basically basically the physical phenomena actually what happens and you see that that whenever the concept of the machine learning come around or whenever the automation initially come around it was all about deploying the copying the uh, the human intelligence and deploying them in the real world scenario but gradually we come across with the concept of the like i mentioned robotic process automation and even in deep learning the philosophy is all about to uh, about to explore it's to go to beyond limit of the human capacity that is a superhuman activity once you go to the superhuman activity philosophy that is the that means the continuous scalability should be there there should there would not be any kind of saturations because if you see in your thought that human being, being a human, you can work around 8 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours, then after that, what will happen? You become tired, your performance will become saturated, you will require some rest. So that is also happens with the data limit. If, before going to 10 to the power 5 order, whatever we have the performance like sigma for sigmoid function, tan hyperbolic, they have the performance wise scalability. But at that domain, if you see the curve, there is a, there is one is the flattened portion of the curve is there where the performance saturates and you require some continuous scalability functions like RAM, the ram like function like relu so that's where the philosophy of the superhuman intelligence comes up and that's the thing actually that the business leaders who are there in the mit who are the top scientists in, from mit stanford they basically visualize it and they basically launch those concepts in the market and now you are getting the benefits of it now what is happening whenever you are coming to big data domain so in the big data the interestingly you can't put any kind of threshold like that terabyte or that petabyte of data you will call it big data because you see as i mentioned that every day the digital world is getting double okay there is an exponential growth so for example in first december that you the, the amount of the database you will experience in your database in in the, in the next 10 days whenever in 11th or 12th december you will come across due to the exponential growth that oh my god what i experienced on first december that is nothing in comparison to today's today's data volume so that's why three v's are there volume velocity and variety okay on the basis of that you actually try to define the big data so there is no, there is no, I mean, that's the difference that the traditional data processing application software will not be educated enough to deal with the big data. And Apache Hadoop is one of those software framework to deal with those big, to handle those big data, to handle those cluster file system. So basically Hadoop is an open source framework. Definitely this is an era of open source softwares. So the, that, that is basically developed on the basis of Java with the cross-platform support facilities. Now, what is the applications of the big data? Obviously, like the other machine learning fields, they are also hugely used. And for example, retail, healthcare, education, e-commerce, telecom. So every this every potential sector, they have the huge amount of the applications you can actually experience out. Now, if you see the companies who are working, there are many companies in big data. I have just mentioned four or five top names. So basically, IBM, Oracle, Clairvoyant, ScienceSoft, HP Enterprise, Prolifis. So basically, those are the companies who are in, in India. Basically, they are usually exploring out on the big data. But there are there are there are other also other companies like Deloitte, uh, TCS, Cognizant. They are also using it. Now, industry job roles. Now, whenever you come across the, for example, like we have seen that in case of the, the concepts like data science, we have, we have seen that the, there are job roles like ML engineers, data scientists, data analysts, business analysts. Now, in case of the big data, what will be the job roles? So, definitely the possible job roles are the common question. Like you will come to see that there are opportunities in the job uh, job opportunities in the in the top companies. But what will be your job roles? So, that is a big data engineering data engineer data architect 
MIS, that means management information system, which is relevant to a database. How will you manage the databases? So MIS uh, rep uh, reporting executive, data scientist obviously is the common role in data scientist. Basically, you, will, you can actually have the opportunity to explore the machine learning, deep learning as well, or you may have to have the opportunity to deal with the Hadoop kind of, uh, kind of softwares to deal with the big data and all. So now after exploring, we have seen that there are so much potential in big data, data science, uh, beta knowledge, I mean, and machine learning, deep learning, AI. Now we will see that another 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 important field that is a cyber security. And then and, and, and the MacAud is providing bachelor's and master degrees or specialization on the basis of the cyber security and applications. So basically, what, what does it imply as a cyber security is a very, very important pillar of the information, information technology system. So basically it all about the dealing with the cyber security or in information technology security for the protection of the computer system and network from being theft or being damaged to their hardware, software or electronic data. So to protect them, the disruption or misdirections of, of the services, basically you, you, requ you require this kind of the cyber security and applications so you can understand that how they, they are becoming so much important part of our daily life because nowadays you all all the time we are being connected with internet we have to and at the end of the day we are basically storing the data digitally okay so we have to protect them as well because why there is so much abundances of the data in the, in the, the current scenario because we are doing everything every activity digitally nowadays there is there, there is no provision of recording with pen and paper we are going everything with the digitally so that's the, that's the reason in every sector, you can see there is so much of the data are available. Now, whenever your data are available, there will be some security threats will be there definitely. So to provide the proper support in terms of the security, the cyber security has a bit playing a very, very strong role, pivotal role there. So what are the applications? If you see the data protection, finding vulnerabilities, protecting from online threats and many more, uh, many more potential applications are there. So what are the languages you require to uh, build your career in cybersecurity direction? If you see it, C, C++, Python, JavaScript, PHP, SQL, those are the, those are the background languages you basically require to build your career in cybersecurity directions. Now, if you see the companies working on cybersecurity domain, basically, if you see the cybersecurity assurance and advisory services, if you look at, including ethical hacking, Deloitte, PwC, EY, KPMG, they are, they are basically providing those opportunities to explore in this field. Software solution developer, if you look at that CrowdStrike, okay, Kaspersky, QuickHill, Semantic, India, IBM, Cisco, Jupyter Networks, Splunk, Microsoft, Palo Alto Networks, McCafe, Proofprint, Checkpoint, those are the companies which are giving the opportunity of the software solution developer in this domain. Then companies into in, into end-to-end -end cyber solutions. If you look at them, you will get the you will get the opportunities in CyberOps, InfoSec, LLP, Lucidius, Fortinet, Darktrace, RSA. Basically, RSA supported by Dell Technologies. So, these are the opportunities you will see whenever you will you will go to the uh, exploring your your career in industry. Now, the, what are the industry job roles then? Then, then whenever you come across the companies, there is a common question that what will be the job roles for the cyber security domain, especially in India. If you look at that one is the IT security specialist, information security analyst, network security engineer, security engineer, application security engineer. Now, what is the role of the IT security specialist? Basically organizations, cyber security posture and its past breaches to understand how the incident occurs and what is the need to done to prevent them. So basically to prevent the fraudulent activities and, and providing the proper cyber security support, the IT security specialist has a playing a very, very significant role out there. And if you see the information security analyst, basically they basically take care of examining the security problems and finding solutions. Whereas the network security engineer, this is an important part of the deployment and configuration, administration of network and security related to hardware and software. What is about security engineer? They're basically responsible for creating an implementation of the solutions to ensure the organization's product and system to make them better and secure virtually. And then obviously another role, another most common role in this particular domain is that application security engineer. 
Yeah, yeah. application security engineers can work work in any number of industries to create, implement, and maintain computer applications and software. So you see, you have so now you come across that the cyber security domain. What are the companies are recruiting out there, and what are the possible job roles? That is IT security specialist, information security analyst, network security engineer, security engineer, application security engineer. So it is like possible job roles you can come across in this domain. Now we are going to IoT and applications. So this is another important particle in information technology. So in, in Macau, there they are also giving some some bachelor's and master specialization degree. And in the particular domain, this is a very very important domain. It will see in the IoT and applications. Okay, so so I request the audiences please mute yourself. Otherwise, it is quite problem uh, problem with the presentation. So can you please mute yourself? Can you please mute yourself? Manos, Manos, Yes. Uh, please mute yourself. You are creating noise. Yeah. Can you hear me now? No, no. You please mute yourself. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. So basically, in IoT and applications, if you look at that information, uh, that the Internet of Things or IoT, now it is what is happening basically. The billions of physical devices are around the past, which are basically connected with the Internet in order to collect data, sharing data. Uh, so, <clears throat> if if you look at this survey uh, done by the Eclipse Foundation in 2019. The top IoT programming languages which you can come across that is Java, Python, C, JavaScript, and PHP. Now, what is the applications of IoT? Because it is all about the IoT. If you look at the everywhere, there, there, there are sensors that they are there collecting data, you are storing data in cloud, you are deploying analytics. And nowadays there are two ways. One is the, either you are storing data in cloud or you can you can bring them the on-premises devices like edge devices edge computing or due computing opportunities are there or even if you can also explore the network gateway as a part of the fog computing so those are the th terminologies you will come to see very soon i mean whenever you during your regular study curriculum in your university study curriculum so basically if you see the applications in the industrial domain in, in the smart homes smart cities farming iot e-commerce chains manufacturing the, the involvement of companies in the Internet of Things are quite rising day by day. And, and now we will, we will see that what are the most com common companies which are basically exploring IoT in India. So basically, Algo Engines. Algo Engines is the most, uh, um, um, as per the re report, they are, the, they are basically the, uh, using the most IoT in, in their particular applications. And, uh, and then, then obviously comes up the Altinux Innovation, Altizone Systems. Pixel carry-ons and, and crayon, pixel crayons, IBM, TCS Innovation Lab. So they are basically exploring IoT in India. And and if you see this, this most of those companies have the at the headquarters either in Pune or Bangalore, in India. So uh, these are the companies there. Basically, you will have the opportunities where where you can actually explore your career, industrial career in IoT directions. Now, what will be the job roles? This is a very common thing. Often students are quite curious to know whenever they go for the specialization courses, doing BSc in, in IoT or doing, doing MTech program in IoT, they often ask that what, what will be my job roles if I go to industry. Now, if you look at the IoT architects, data designers, chief data officers, IoT business designer, these are the very, very common job roles if you can come across. Now, what is what, what does it actually imply by the IoT architect role? It's all about the the compensating for increasing architectural complexity of IoT stacks. Then if you see the data de designers looking to the extract value from the huge amount of the data generated by IoT devices, it's all about because it tackling with the large volume of the data, it's a very, very difficult role. And that's why data designers, data architects, okay, data engineers are getting gradually gaining more importance in those directions. Cheap data officers, the need of ready access to data access will increase the concomitantly with increased data volumes overall. So basically, what does it happen that cheap data officers basically tackles with the data volume per aspect? Because I told you that 
database, if you see, there's a, there are three views of the databases nowadays if you come across in the big data aspects, that is volume, velocity, and variety. Now, the exponential growth of the data, due to exponential growth of the data to deal with them, it's becoming very, very challenging roles. So they, the, the, the gaining data from the sensors and how to place them in the, in the databases and how to tackle them, I mean, to extract out the prominent features from the data and, 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 and to handling the, I mean, data, the dimensional reduction is becoming very, very challenging role and challenging task. So chief data officers, data designers have this kind of the roles. And obviously, IoT in the business domain, like IoT business designer is one of the, those aspects. Like I told you that even nowadays, the roles of the business analyst management people are also moving to, towards data-driven approaches. Earlier, it was all about the qualitative approach in that particular field but nowadays it is all 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 are coming towards the quantitative approach because data driven approaches will guide you the right directions because in qualitative approach whenever you collect data from survey based approach or the opinion based approach there are always human biases are there but whenever you are building a perfect data set you want to build you have to remove the human opinion bias so that is only can be done through the data driven approaches so there are humongous potential you can see. Now, if you see another important pillar or verticals in this particular IoT domain, and that is blockchain and applications. Now, what does it actually imply blockchain? So originally, basically, the blockchains is all about the growing list of records in the form of blocks, which are linked with cryptography. And, and each blocks contains the cryptographic hash information from the previous block, timestamp, transactional data, all those data are there. Now, what are the skill setup requires? So skill setups you require that is uh, obviously the basic aspects of the data structure. Let me tell you, uh, I mean, obviously the data structures play a very strong role in blockchain domain, but I also want to mention one thing that during discussion of the data science AI, I also want to mention that in data science AI domain, it's not about the predicting perfectly or providing the classification accuracy. Whenever you are going to the industry as a data scientist, you have to deal with the time complexity factor as well, that how well you are dealing with the data. For example, if you are storing data and as in the format of the image, okay, for example, n by n image, if you are dealing with the nested for loop, the order of complexity will be order of n square. Now, how you can actually reduce them, the order of complexity, if I tell you to reduce order of complexity. So for example, in the first row, you have ABC, in second row, you have DEF, image as a matrix format, right? So if you'd go by the vectorization, Okay, so unfolding the data. So either you can go by the horizontal direction, vectorization or vertical direction, vectorization, ABC, DF. So what will happen then? You will reduce the time complexity through the vectorization from order of N square to order of N. So those are the tricks we have to play with the, the data structure. So like in machine learning or deep learning domain, the, deep, the, 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 the data structure is also very strong, playing a very strong role in your blockchain domain as well. Because always remember that the, the, the technologies are changing rapidly, but basics are always very, very important. So I request to all of you that that please right from the beginning, if you really want to make your make your good industrial career, or even if you want to explore in academics for the higher studies purpose, please make sure that your basics are very strong. So data structure plays a very, very strong role there. And then if you see the knowledge of the programming languages like C++, C Sharp, C Scala, Java, Python, those knowledges are also very important in this field. Now, if you see the applications in this domain, now secure sharing of medical data, supply chain and logistics, supply chain and logistics are everywhere. I mean, you will see there is a lot of technology, whatever the modern technologies are there, you will see the applications in this particular domain and the companies, for example, Tata Cons Consultancy Services or even in this kind of type of major recruiters, which, which are the major recruiter in India and Asia, Pacific region, they have a lot of projects in supply chain domain. So this is the most apl applicable field. And then, then anti anti money laundering tracking system, music royalty tracking, personal identity security. So everywhere you can see there is a huge applications of the blockchain. So even even it is a very common practice for few universities to give the certificate uh, with the blockchain certified certificates. So these are the very common thing nowadays. So companies working on blockchain in India, if you see the Jignats Technolab Private Limited, they, they, there's most of those companies are either based on the Bangalore or, or Pune or Hyderabad. So this year, the very frequent region of India where the companies are having their headquarters, Brancosoft Private Limited, Tart Software Private Limited, Quest Global Technologies, 
crypto infotech mind depth technologies private limited so those are the very frequent users these are not the limited list but i am just highlighting five six important names so these are the very frequent users of the blockchain and they hire a lot of people in this particular domain so industry job roles in blockchain so what will be the job roles we have seen come across the basic concepts what are the application domain what are the important companies which are exploring in this particular field but what will be your basically job roles if you are exploring your career in blockchain so basically blockchain quality engineer blockchain project manager blockchain developer blockchain solution architect so these are the basically very important job role industry standard job role in blockchain now blockchain quality engineer if you see they basically test and ensure that all areas of the project are of the required quality so maintenance of the required quality is being taken care of by blockchain quality engineer if you see blockchain project manager so basically blockchain project manager taking care of the responsibility of connecting blockchain projects to the experts whose duty is to develop the blockchain solutions blockchain developers so basically they has the expertization to develop companies to explore blockchain platforms then blockchain solution architect so they basically takes care of the responsibility of designing assigning and connecting blockchain solution components so these are the basically important job roles if you see so blockchain quality engineering blockchain quality man management which, which has been taken care of the blockchain quality manager then blockchain developers then blockchain solution architects so these are the very very important important job roles if you if you if you come across the in the blockchain domain now one one important thing that after exploring all those particles we have seen now this is one of the very common question for the students that that what are the platforms i will explore in order to practice because aptitude is a very very common important thing for the students or those who are preparing themselves for the industry orientation jobs so basically they always ask that what will be the prominent platforms where i can explore the aptitude practicing and all so basically www.indiabix.com is one of those those platforms important platforms where actually you can explore your uh, aptitude skill setups then placement.refresherworld.com then then preprintstar.com these are the very very strong uh, i mean i mean um, um, platforms to give you the proper proper preparation for the actual test and definitely these are my contact details you can actually contact me with any of those platforms and my 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 uh, phone numbers and email ids are also with the your your professors uh, so basically you can if you require any kind of help or career guidance in this particular domain you can any time feel free to contact with me and obviously there are so much knowledgeable professor is there in the department of it consult with them they will give you the proper directions whether in terms of your you want to build your career in industry or in research directions so they are they are quite actively involved in research as well so you will get all kind of support from the department and thank you very much now i i request to all of you if you have any kind of queries feel free to ask me i will try my best to answer your queries thank you very much uh, thank you professor mukha uh, bhagwati now uh, students are requesting to drop their question in the chat box or they can directly ask if they have any question to sir so students Question: You can unmute yourself and can you ask to sir. Okay, there is a question in the chat box saying that uh, sir can knowledge about the IT devices be helpful for a data scientist? Look. it is there is no harm to having a good knowledge of about the iot devices for for being data scientist you require the basic skills on linear algebra statistics probability because probability having good knowledge on probability why it is important because you see there will be some bayesian approaches okay so bayesian models is dynamic bayesian model for example hidden markov model markov model those things are there so try to understand the conditional probability based theorem as well along with the linear algebra in linear algebra mostly on the part of the basically the matrix concept of the matrix eigen vector eigen value because you will see principal component analysis singular value decomposition those have the huge potential on those directions and along with that then gradually 
you, you you go to explore with the basic concepts of the machine learning now having good knowledge on iot devices sometimes obviously helps because you see everything is interconnected to having good understanding of the data having good knowledge on iot devices will give you the understanding of the data resources at the end of the day you are collecting data from the sensors and you see there are a different kind of according to the data resources there are different kind of noises are uh, uh, basically in convoluted format with the data if you are using laser for example i am just giving you some examples in its simple language such that you can understand this scenario whenever if you are in, 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 in any kind of biomedical lab or biophotonics lab you are exploring with some experiment with the tissue tissue samples you want to collect the either tissue images data or what the spectroscopic data from those tissues so what you are doing you are exploring with the laser now due to having the laser as a as a, as a resource uh, or light resource, what will happen? You will come to see some granular noise inbuilt in your data. So, granular noise means there will be some salt paper noises. For example, the astrologist, uh, um, sorry, as astronomers who are basically ex exploring in the field of the star detection. So, whenever they are doing the star detection, so what happens? There, there are also ex uh, presence of the granular noises. So, at the end of the day, you will have some device by means which you can actually collect the data. So in, in, in IoT devices, there is so much abundance of the IoT devices in every sector, from the me medical sector to e-commerce sector, everywhere. And due to that, you are capturing some data, but that noise means there is the unwanted signal, which is actually contaminating with the original signal. Now, in the data pre-processing step, you have to, on a, in data pre-processing step, you have to, you have to uh, remove those noises as well. So it is always better to understand the IoT devices, if, if possible because it, it gives you the 360 view of the aspects it gives you the much more broader broader clear picture that what you want to solve what kind of problem you want to solve so first of all the basic requirement in the data science domain is all about having your skill on linear algebra statistics probability along with the programming languages like r pythonic platforms like tensorflow Python, any of the Pythonic platforms, Keras will be good enough. And then if you get, gain some idea on the IoT devices, what can be better than that? Because remember that in present scenario, IoT is, is playing a very good, significant role. And then, then your next question is about the database management. Look, database management system at the end of the day, just for your understanding purpose. Uh, Basically, things as you require some containers to store data, right? So, in, in generally, database management system is basically that kind of container where you basically store the data. So, in RDBMS relation databases, where you have the tabular format like, like approach, which we call the which we can deal with the SQL structured query languages. But nowadays, it is all about the schemaless database, there is no rigidity at all so basically you can you can the, for example i mentioned the ex examples like graph databases where actually uh, for example one of the uh, all the social media networks that you see facebook linkedin everybody is using graph there's a huge job opportunities there okay next uh, for example what, what are the future of cyber security job in india uh, immensely immensely uh, immense job opportunities are there like i mentioned in my slide also because at the end of the day i told you that try to understand in a very simple language that use your common sense for example you are storing data digitally you are not writing writing data in for example not storing data in, in terms of the pen and paper those days are gone so do you, as you are storing the data, data in digitally, you, know, you are making all the transactions digitally, you can easily understand that there will be some security threats, okay? So to remove those security threats, you require to take the assistance of the cybersecurity expert in every aspect of, of, of your life, right? From the healthcare domain to agriculture domain to any any government official side, everywhere, basically, you require to protect the privacy, you require to makes make, make take taken care of the this uh, secure transaction so there is a huge opportunity is there and if you if you go, go back to my slide for example if, 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 just a second let me go back to that slide you will, you will see that that the type of the type of the job roles they are basically providing okay if you if you look at this particular slide that it security specialist it security analyst network security engineer security engineer application security engineer there is a huge humongous amount of the job roles are there and if you see the companies deloitte pwc ui kpmg cloud strike kaspersky quick hill ibm cisco 
enormous amount of the companies are offering you the jobs in the cybersecurity domain. So this is a very, very significant, uh, I mean, I mean, aspect in, the, in, the, in that particular domain. What are the future of BCS students job in India? Uh, just a second, oh, oh, I missed out another question. What are the basic skills? So, becomes so a data before, site? before answering this question, I, I would like to uh, share something. So, so please, sir, please, so sir. Sir is a uh, means leading of Facebook developer circle in our Eastern region and India. So if you want to join this Facebook developer circle, you can directly contact with Sir. So Sir, please guide our students if they how, how they can join with you. Sure, sure. Development. In, in, sure, please. If you are interested to join the Facebook developer circle, Kolkata, what you can do it? I have I have made a very procedure very simple. You can in Facebook, you can search Facebook developer circle Kolkata. It will appear in your search box. There is an official group. This is a very official group from Facebook. You can you can send a join request. I will I will approve it. There is no problem regarding that. From if you join those groups, you will you will come to see what are the official hackathons are being launched by Facebook. So there are huge prize monies that they are there on the development of the AIML um, and, and 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 obviously the full stack development. There are a lot of open source projects are there where you can actually contribute and you can you can you can you can die come came uh, i mean you can win the um, a huge prize money from 15 it starts from the 15 lakhs INR in indian currency and obviously there are also some open source uh, i mean sorry there are also some uh, uh, career development courses are there which you can be enrolled as a part of the active member of the facebook developer circle kolkata uh, that is, uh, you can uh, you can associate it with data camp. You can associate it with Udacity courses, which will be completely free for you. So there are a lot of lot of opportunities that there. If you want to, if you want to know more in details about it, you can directly contact me. My contact details are with Joyce as my contact details. So there is no problem regarding that. There are ample opportunities of learning nowadays, as I told you that since the 90s, 1990s post era, there is a there is a huge, uh, humongous amount of the open source development has been made, and due to that, like I mentioned, one of the prominent project has been developed by the, which is the reason for developing the R programming language, that is GNU Free project by the Linux Foundations. So nowadays, all of you use uh, apart from Windows, all of you explore Linux, right? So there that that has they had the huge contributions, Linux Foundation, GNU Free Linux Foundation contribution on the R language. It was developed by Ross Yark and Robert Gentleman, but due to their name initiator with R, so that's why the language name is R. So that has been launched, uh, official launch has, launching has been made in 2000. But the, the, that is the reason of their, their why, why those languages are gaining popularity. Even if you see Python, all those open source frameworks, Keras, TensorFlow, PyTorch, everybody is getting popularity because of that. Now, to going back to that particular question, that what are the requirements of being data scientist? So as I already mentioned, that you should have a very good knowledge about the linear algebra, matrix. Then you go to statistics, probability. Then you gradually start with the basic aspects of the time series, uh, machine learning, what are their concepts. So statistics is, there are two kinds of the statistical uh, things. That the one is the descriptive statistics, where mean, median, mode, uh, histogram, those kind of concepts you learn. Another one is the inferential statistics, where you will come to see about the confidence level. Okay, so, so th th those type of the concepts you should know right from the beginning. And then, then obviously, I am telling you that if you are, if you want to be make your, you are sure that you want to make your career in data science domain, please learn Python. Python is the most requirement, and obviously, uh, having good grip on R as well. If you know the Python, what will happen then? All these these Pythonic frameworks like Keras, TensorFlow, PyTorch will be quite easier for you to explore out and make your career on that direction. It will help you. Okay. So Riti Khaldar, actually, you see, I will share my slide. I will send my uh, send my PPT to your sir. He will share with all of you. Okay. So you will you do not worry about it. You will you will you will get the slide. So you will easily can see those companies. What are the companies? What are the uh, the link resources for your coding practice? And what are the link resources for your aptitude? But everything is there in this slide. I will email it. Okay. So nothing to worry about it about this slide. So what is the what are the few important differences between R programming and Python? You see that look, both are the open source and free. This is a very common thing in both of them. But R, you see, uh, there there are there are certain 
you do not require the extra uh, whenever you are exploring the uh, statistical uh, operations are as humongous setup of the of the uh, <clears throat> intrinsic supportive tools within them okay to support the statistical operations while dealing with the time series problem while while extracting out the live data from twitter and exploring out to check out the trends what are the common trends are going on there in the social media so r has an extensive support in terms of the statistical deployment okay so and whereas in case of the r has earlier limitations uh, during the big data applications it, it was i am talking about 3 4 year back but as i told you that due to the blessings of the open source community everybody is contributing what who have to have the good good grip on those development and due to the blessings of that r nowadays can even tackle the big data as well with their r hadoop platform and we will come to see the name hadoop right in case of the big data r hadoop is is the deployment of the cross platform between r and hadoop to tackle the big data so that is has become a very very uh, very very strong pivotal role and and python in case of the python you see the python has a has an extensive library support okay so you, you can name num it has a support like numpy scipy for different numerical and scientific computational purpose so basically and all those in deep learning whenever you go by the go, go you want to explore the deep learning kind of stuffs it is always better to go by python because they have already the supports like keras papaya uh, pytorch or tensorflow you can explore any of them to deploy those deep learning problems so r is more inclined about the statistical related problems and obviously machine learning is there but python is always good to deal with the deep learning problems okay and the python has a support like i told you that cloud connector language cloud communication language if you talk about python and java are the good options now due to the humongous support of the pythonic approach in the in the in those deep learning frameworks python gained huge popularity in case of the this kind of the uh, machine learning deep learning domain so these two has different aspects but very very useful if you know them so basically uh, what are what are the use of pytorch keras in in for example look pytorch keras if you are solving any kind of machine learning or deep learning problems you, you can use those those frameworks they are basically frameworks on the basis of the python built on python so for example if you are there are images 10 images of the um, of the of the uh, dogs whether you can whether which one is cat or which one is dog how can you solve those classification problems like i given you one example like bat plant how to identify bat plants so what you will do you will basically build a training data sets of some good plant and black plant images and then what will happen those are the label data set because you are doing supervised learning then you will you will put some unknown sample which is basically the test image okay test data so it's may it may be support vector machine or any other kind of tools you will basically deploy them and you will identify that whether that plant is bad or not okay for example you are you, are, you want to detect whether is some whether that person has healthy or cancerous okay for all these test diagnosis of cancer so in a similar way you will build the data set either with the spectroscopic data if it is spectroscopic data then what will happen you will have the wavelength versus intensity information or it is images then it's fine so you will you will train those to those images okay either through machine learning or deep learning depending on the database you have for example it is 100 200 300 500 images machine learning is very good to tackle them if it is 80000 to 1 lakh data set go to deep learning you can use convolutional neural network and you can easily resolve it out okay so what is the difference between business analytics and business intelligence problem that's a very good question you see look business analytics is based on the two part one is your business analytics with sorry business intelligence plus advanced analytics now is business intelligence you see you mostly deal with the visualization tools like for example microsoft power bi okay then you have the uh, <clears throat> so so for example microsoft power bi you do not require to code much it's all all are the mostly about the template driven approach but whenever you go to the advanced analytics section for example you want to you want to you want to predict the stock 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 market performances or or any other stuffs so uh, you basically require to deploy the r or python python type of programming where you you require to know basic kind of programming concepts 
to resolve those issues. So there are two parts actually in industry where you, you require the coding, some sort of coding, another part where you can actually explore out the data visualization tools. So Tableau or Power BI, those kind of the visualization tools, those who don't have the much strong grip on the coding part, they can easily deploy those data visualization tools and, and explore out the what, what are the insightful things that are happening in the data. So there are both ways the opportunities are there. Okay, one part is going through coding, another part is doing to this kind of the template driven approach like Power Microsoft Power BI or Tableau, this kind of approaches. So, sir, what do you what to do for studies after BSc in these streams? In which streams? BSc and MacOut are offering several programs in BSc, right? Data science program is there. Uh, I think cyber security IoT program is there. Which program you are talking about? If you mention, then I can answer it. Can you, uh, sir, can you share your contact details slide, please, one second before catching up? It has gone. Okay, you can, you can actually take it in just a second. I'm sharing it. I hope the screen is visible to you. So this is my actually the social media handles where you can join me or you, you, my contact numbers are with, or with Joy, sir. You can collect it from him. He will give you. Feel free to contact me anytime. There is no problem. So those, and then the slide will be given to you actually. Okay, so nothing to worry about it. I will I will share the slide. I will send the slide to Joy sir. He will he will he will share with all, share to all of you. Okay. Okay, so uh, BSc in uh, sir, I am uh, BSc in cyber security. So about oh okay. So look, there. If you are BSc, like like you see that BTEC or BSc, those who are in the bachelor's degree, they are, they have the industrial or job opportunities are there. The com you, you will come across the slide. You will see that there are companies never given there. If you if you see those companies are hiring the bachelor's people. Those are the either BTEC or BSc people regarding the jobs in they are providing the jobs in cyber security. Provided that you can, you can, you can, you can, you can have to uh, uh, deal with them in interview pretty well, yeah, because they they take the quite hard interviews. So go through the basic requirements for their 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 job portal. What what kind of JD they want? Because job description becomes very very important in the industrial scenario. You have to understand that what type of languages you require to know, what type of skill setup you require to know. Then you can easily grab those jobs. Or you can, if you are interested, you can go for higher studies as well. You can do MSc as well. What are the future of BCA students job in India? Well, look, the, the, the companies like TCS are hiring BCA students as well. I told you like that, that if you are if you have the enough skill in your domain there is there is no scarcity of the job like i like i go I gave you one example that whenever the robotic process automation came in 2000 uh, for example in 2014 it was robot business process automation in 2018 19 the trend came to the robotic process automation and one of our indian topmost company got the project from japan i am just telling you this the real real scenario what happened then they required 3 lakh jobs Actually, if, if that particular uh, particular people know that particular robotic process automation skill, then there was a job demand of three lakh. Three lakh people from India can get those job in this particular company. They are they are looking for people who have those expertise. But unfortunately, only two fifty people know that particular skill. Can you imagine the job demand is about three lakh? Only two fifty people know that particular skill. So that's what I am telling that there is a scarcity of the skill. You have to remove the barrier between industry and academic gap. And that's why these type of courses are being launched by MacOut to give you the opportunity to learn those advanced technologies, those advanced methodologies. Okay. So what you need to know, need to do is that you have to always stay updated about what is happening in the industry, apart from your course curriculum. Go through the courses, make your basics very strong and see what are the opportunities are coming up in the market. Very carefully go through the job description, JDs, that what type of the what type of the skill setup they are asking and how much you can cover from your current course curriculum. And if anything you finding that you are lacking of certain skill, how you can overcome them. And regarding that, you can always feel free to contact us. Okay. I am always approachable, so there is no problem. With best of my capacity, I will try to guide you. Uh, I was asking if I should do M MSc or MC after BSc. You can, you can do, you can, you can, you can, you can actually do MSc. No problem regarding that. Akash, there is no problem. 
you have the job opportunities as well because those companies are hiring the bachelor people with bachelor degree or if you want to go for msc there is no problem main thing is that you require to have those skill setups like i am telling you go through the jds job descriptions if you see the job description you will understand what type of skill setups are required and i have i have mentioned those things for every sector whether it is cyber security or or it is uh, blockchain whoever you have want to specialize on those domains what are the programming languages you require to know what are the companies are hiring what will be your job roles everything is there what you require to know you have to go much details about with those informations okay then you will it will be quite clear for you so any more queries or question in the chat box i think i have answered all those question so if there is no question then uh, we can wind it up here students if you have any yes sir in the sir what is the opportunity in the geo informatics well so geo informatics actually i don't have my much personal expertization but uh, in the research domain at least i know that you, you will have the lot of lot of interesting research projects are going on there but definitely in industry area i i can't tell the company's name as of now but uh, in, in in obviously there are I, I may as far my information i have seen there are there are companies are also well uh, also there who can who can hire the people from the geoinformatics background uh, because i have seen there are few recruit recruitments are going on by some other companies it all depends upon the projects actually in geoinformatics domain those those are from the core core uh, it domain people they basically they are mostly hire from the iot ai data science background but it all depends upon the project but if you have those those basic aspects uh, quite basic requirement of the this particular domain it is quite clear to you you can be hired in this particular domain as well but in in the higher studies there are a lot of opportunities i mean there are a lot of projects are there funded projects are there in in europe if you want to go for phd there are a lot of funding opportunities are there in germany france there are a lot of opportunities for the higher study purpose phd postdocs and geo informatics domain is a very very important domain but you see there are there are every fields have some limitations as well for example in the in india in industrial aspects geo informatics is a blossoming field and next by uh, next 4 5 years if you see there will be a lot of industrial opportunities will come up for sure and if you want to contact me if you, you can contact me later on i will give you more much more informations but in industrial aspect in geo informatics i have limited knowledge because there is not much so much industrial scope as of now but there there are companies who are hiring definitely sir which line do you think is the most needed now well so look the the thing the particles i have discussed so far whether it is blockchain whether it is uh, um, <clears throat> data science or big data or iot all those verticals if you see the courses are being provided by macout in the department of it every every single verticals has a huge demand okay and and those those every sector has a very good balanced demand if you go to academics you can go there if you want to go to industry side you can go there in both ways there's a huge potential that i can assure you any more questions So I think uh, there is no questions. So, uh, on behalf of uh, Department of Information Technology, uh, I'd like to thank you to give your valuable time to us, to our students, to gain their knowledge and in different perspectives and their career growth. So, uh, hope uh, we'll uh, join in different section in near future. Uh, in different kind of uh, developer circle will be introduced in our uh, department so from that uh, i would like to request you please uh, help us to join those kind of means programs sure sure sir it is my pleasure thank you very much for inviting me here it's a pleasure to interact with the students and and with all of you 
thank you very much and bipa sama i am also thankful to you thank you very much so basically it's all about a synergistic approach to guide the students whether it is industrial approach or whether it is the academic directions definitely with best of my capacity i will do my best and the and the students as i told you that i will share my ppt with your sir so he will share with all of you so go through those links explore them you will get enough knowledge about how to proceed in your career direction and for any kind of confusions or if you if you want to reach out to me my contact details with with uh, with joy sir you can easily reach reach out to me reach out to me by taking my contact number from him okay so there is no problem so always be positive minded and try to explore take take out the benefits of the it infrastructures because i just want to want to highlight one one point just before concluding that part that in 2013 mit has launched one theme that softwares are the new hardwares then in 2017 infosys has made that converted that plural to singular and adapted that theme that is software is the new hardware why they have they have it followed that particular theme if you see the philosophy behind that that nowadays for example earlier days you want to carry the wallet okay you are you are carrying wallet you are taking paying the physical cash okay but nowadays you are using the online platforms like paytm okay phone pay you are transferring the digital money from those platforms so what actually you are doing you are replacing the the, the physical cash to the digital cash so you are gradually removing the redundancy of the hardware in terms of the software for example if you have seen that in the earlier days it was used the optical fiber probe was used to detect the the oral cancer people used to sign the light and check out them nowadays doctors or physicians are using smartphone mobile phone best approach they are using mobile phone camera to check out whether there's infected lesions are the cancerous or not so what they are doing actually they are removing this this hardware part of the optical fiber probe with the mobile phone camera so what is happening now you are reducing the hardware cost by enforcing this software platform there with their intellectuality and what is happening that due to those blessings of those it infrastructure your your production cost are being reduced because it is required you try to understand that we are living in that in in a developing country where more than 96% people under the bottom of pyramid category okay that means they do not have enough money to pay tax so it is our responsibility being a technologist or being being professors or being some industrial person or scientist whatever may be our profession that if we can contribute a little to in that particular direction whatever the best of our capacity we have then it will it will be blessings to us the information technology will become best blessings to our society so that's what i want to say that please stay positive minded try to understand and embrace the information technology for the well being of human being because that is the one of the way where actually you can provide the low cost affordable solutions to make to make the betterment of the mankind that's it thank you very much so thank you once again professor mukobadai on behalf of our department we again thanking you to make us privilege through our, your fantastic knowledge sharing and especially for the question and answer session so thanks you again thank you very much ma'am it's my pleasure thank you very much so now we have our uh, second session that is the yoga session so i like to request mr devobroto and ms shoma if they are here uh, they can and mute themselves and can visible themselves and they can start now their session on you good afternoon ma'am and good afternoon all my delegates and good afternoon all my loyal students so at first our yoga session start the uh, soma soma ma'am soma is the yoga instructor in our university uh, jo, uh, i am audible or visible ma'am hello yes yes you are audible okay so ma'am you can start the at first warm up session then surya namaskar and also start the asanas okay you can start
you are not audible that's why right, you are make left side and right side bend 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 10 your both hand your shoulder level and up and down 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 up and shoulder level down 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and both hand in a fold for elbow 
At first, sit in leg, stretch out. Are you visible? Yes, yes, you are visible. Okay. And both leg closed. Then exhaling, bend your forward and catch the toes or thumb. And finger leg, finger of the hand. As far both leg closed, then your upper body bend forward and catch your. Soma, you are not. Uh... Soma ma'am, you are not visible. I am visible. You are not visible. Because I am visible. Yes, yes, you are visible. I think there is some problem with the network of the Bhubhuto. You are visible, you can continue. Yes, yes, yes. Your upper body bend forward, your cast the your legs, thumb, finger, or toe. Okay? Your cast, thumb, thumb, finger, and do finger. And both elbow, both hand, elbow touch on the ground, and head touch on the knee. Okay? 
Now start. As much as possible, you bend and touch on the knee, your head, and elbow touch the ground. And hold this position. This is called Paschimottasana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Relax. Relax. First, both hands stretch, straight, and your hand back side, and you relax. Next, shake. Okay. Again, your your upper body bent, and your catch the three finger and legs thumb finger. And elbow touch the ground. and hold this position hold this position hold this position hold this position and relax and relax what is benefit the paschimottasana it is gives many advantage it is stress spinal and hamstring muscle hamstring muscle this is a hamstring muscle thigh muscle lower then it helps to remove excess fat in the abdominal organs and it helps the kundalini energy and it improves overcome the constipation and helps your prevention of the diabetes improve the spinal strength and remove the gastric acid which person which person have the high blood pressure hernia and spondylosis okay which person have Having blood pressure, hernia, spondylosis, this asana avoid. Next, our dear Devo Brother Sir, start. Okay, thank you so much. And, and everybody, everybody should this asana practice daily, day by day, one to three times. Morning and evening time. Okay. Now start. Okay. okay. Uh, I am hardly requested all students. Please on your camera. Please on your camera. All students are hardly requested. So on your camera. Yes, I am visible, ma'am. Vipasha, ma'am. Yes, you are visible. Yes, yes please yes. continue. Oh, all students are hardly requested. You are um, on your camera. Please. Yes. And we just uh, practice in pranayama and with the meditation. Okay. Let us do it. Low practice in low pranayama. You can sit easy. You can sit easy. 
you can see it is the spine should be straight spine should be straight both hands keep on your knees both hand keep on your knees both hand keep on your knees and very slow close your eyes very slow close your eyes you just listen you just listen and doing doing this okay just inhale 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 and completely exhale very slow completely exhale very slow completely exhale very slow now you are at first you are completely exhale inhale sorry completely inhale 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 and now completely exhale total your or total year leave your body total now deep inhale 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 hold the breathing hold the breathing and very forcefully exhale like that very forcefully exhale and completely leave the air in your body again inhale 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 and hold the hold the respiration hold hold the air hold and forcefully exhale the air forcefully then again inhale 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 and hold 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 and then forcefully exhale forcefully exhale you just forcefully exhale one or two times forcefully exhale then again inhale 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 and just stop hold hold the air hold then forcefully exhale very forcefully exhale now now normal breathing pause is normal but open but don't open your eyes but don't open your eyes very slow inhale and slow exhale normal your breathing pause is very normal but your before the pranayama your breathing pauses now very smoothly breathing pauses you just feel you just feel your breathing pauses very smoothly you just feel but don't open your eyes please don't open your eyes please don't open your eyes you just feel your breathing pauses very smoothly you just feel then again then again logo panama part 2 you are beginner so you can practice in panama or um, logo panama part 2 then again inhale 1 2 3 4 totally hold here hold 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 then exhale out eight count one exhale two three four five six seven eight inhale one two three four hold 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 then again exhale exhale three four five six seven eight nine okay then again inhale one two three four five hold one two 
थ्री फोर देन एक्सेल टोटल यूर एक्सेल वन टू फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन देन एगेन इनहेल 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 Hold, 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 hold. Then exhale. Very slow, exhale. Very slow, and as much as possible, as a long time. Very slow, exhale. Very slow, very slow, very slow. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then again, normal breathing. Then again, normal breathing. But don't open your eyes. But don't open your eyes. But don't open your eyes. You just concentrate on your breathing. 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 Then again, you just completely inhale and total your abdomen. Then you totally inhale your chest, inhale and total respiratory tract get full. Inhale again, inhale. Then you just exhale very slow. Ten count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again inhale. Abdomen, chest, and total. Then exhale very slow, very slow, as much as you are possible. Very long time. Exhale. Time. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then again inhale, inhale. Again, the total full the track, respiratory tract is full. Then, totally as much as possible, as long time as the exhale possible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then again, abdomen, chest. And also neck. Then exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But don't open your eyes. You just normal breathing process start, and that time you just concentrate on your breathing process, and spine should be straight. Please, spine should be straight. Please, spine should be straight. Spine should be straight. But don't open your mouth. But don't open your mouth. Now, start the Om chanting process. You are togetherly start the Om chanting. That time, you just concentrate on your vibration in your uh, uh, inside the chest. It just. Feel the vibration. That time, you just concentrate on your chest. Now start. Oh. Then again. The start the Om Chanti. Oh. Now inhale and again the Om Chanti. Oh. Oh. 
Inhale and again Om Chanting. Oh. Then again inhale. Last time, Om Chanti. Oh. Now stop and normal breathing, but don't open your eyes. But don't open your eyes. Spine should be straight. Spine should be straight. Rubbing your palm. Rubbing your palm. Rubbing your palm. And palm should be touched on your facial muscle. Facial muscle. Then again, then again, rubbing your palm. And touching your facial muscle with a neck muscle. With a neck muscle. Then again, rubbing your palm. And touching your facial muscle and so very slow open your eyes. Very slow open your eyes. Very slow open your eyes. Hand should be keep on your knees. Hand should be keep on your knees. And very slowly. At first you see the right side. Then the left side. Very slow. Thank you all the students. And also be a lot of thanks. Thank you all of the students. Thank you, Mr. Devabruto. Thank you, Shoma. Uh, so now that was all for today. Thank you, students. And uh, there is a uh, announcement that uh, today uh, you don't have any classes. I mean, your uh, uh, subjects class. But tomorrow you have classes. Now uh, I would request all the students, all the participants to join the activities which have already announced in this platform. One was the photography and another was the uh, essay writing. So as, as many as of you uh, want to uh, participate, you can uh, participate. So that was all for today. Thank you all the participants. Thank you the panelists and students. So have a good day. Now I am terminating today's session. Uh, thank you.